I've drawn here a manifold M together with two different parameterizations of M, one on an open set U in RM, so let's say this is an M-dimensional manifold, and one on an open set W of RM. And here we have M intersect V, and these open charts and parameterizations give us diffeomorphisms of an open subset of RM with a little patch of the manifold around the point C. The theorem that we mentioned last time stated that the tangent space is well-defined and doesn't depend on the choice of parameterization. Namely, if I chose the tangent space here and took its image in the manifold in RK, assuming that M is a subset of RK, then the image of this tangent space is going to coincide with the image of this tangent space for any other parameterization. However, what's not true, and I briefly mentioned this, is that if I had a basis here of vectors, then these individual vectors might get sent to something like this here. But for a different choice of parameterization, for instance, I could have taken this picture and just rotated it, the basis vectors here might get sent to completely different vectors in the tangent space of the manifold at that point. And this makes it difficult to choose a particular basis on a manifold at any point. And we'll talk more about this later and the idea of choosing a basis in a continuous manner as a function of varying your points on the manifold. It always works to choose a basis at a specific point C in your manifold, but it might not be possible to choose a basis at every point of your manifold. So for instance, let me just briefly draw this as a picture. Um, for example, this doesn't work on the standard unit sphere S2. It does work on the unit circle in R2, but it doesn't work on the two sphere. And you can sort of visualize this if I took if I started off with a basis here and I wanted to continuously vary this basis, maybe as I go to the bottom, it curves a little bit like this. Sorry, these arrows are straight, but maybe with respect to what it originally looked like, it might look like it's turning. And I might try to do something like this, and so on. And it's actually a theorem. It might not be so obvious from this picture, but it might be if you try to actually draw this on a globe. Uh, that you won't be able to do this in a continuous fashion. In fact, you won't even be able to do this with a single vector in a continuous fashion. Uh, and we'll actually be able to uh, describe theorems like this later on. Nevertheless, even though we don't have a basis of vectors for a manifold M, what we could do is we can look at, if we have two manifolds, let's just draw a three-hole uh, torus, for example, and a differentiable function from one manifold to another, maybe this is like a potato, or at least the skin of a potato. Uh, let's call this N, let's call this M, and let's choose a point C and the image of that point FC. Now, assuming that F is differentiable at every point, this is, first of all, a subset of, let's say, some RL, and this is a subset of RK. And we've already discussed the fact that if we took arbitrary subsets of Euclidean space, we can make sense of what it means for that function to be differentiable. All we ask is that there exists an open set containing that set and an extension of our function to an open neighborhood of that set for which the differential exists and the function is differentiable. However, if our subset was somewhat arbitrary, then different extensions would induce different differentials. And as a result, there might not be a unique differential. So we might not be able to actually define a differential for an arbitrary subset of, of Euclidean space. However, if our subset happens to be an m-dimensional manifold or an n-dimensional manifold in this case, and the target space is also some manifold, then we can define a notion of a differential. How can we do that? So for manifolds, what we can do is we can define the differential by first choosing an extension of f. Let me draw this above it a little bit. f, let's call it tilde. Um, so let f tilde 
be an extension of f in an open neighborhood of C. So we have some open ball. It could be an open ball, for instance. It doesn't have to be, as long as it's some open set, containing the point C. And we extend our function f to some function on this open ball. And there, that defines, so let's, be, let's see, an open neighborhood V. Let's call that open neighborhood V. Um, then, being an extension, by the way, means that f tilde, when restricted to V intersect M, equals f. So we have to first make sure that our function is consistent with the function we initially had. Then, f tilde defines a function from v to rk. Now, v is an open subset of, of Euclidean space. rk is a Euclidean space. We can take the differential of this function. So d c f tilde exists, and it's a function from the tangent space at the point C in the open set V to the tangent space at the point FC in RK. And this is something we're already familiar with. But you, previously, we perhaps called this just RL. And this we just called RK. And we could have used the basis here, and we would have gotten a Jacobian. Now, what we have is that the tangent space of the manifold N is a subspace of the tangent space of V at the point C. And so we can restrict this differential at the point C to TCN. It makes sense to take a linear transformation on some vector space and just look at that linear transformation on a subspace. This restriction is independent of the choice of the extension f tilde. That's one claim. And secondly, d c f tilde, the image of the tangent space to the manifold at n, is contained in the tangent space of the manifold m at the point f c. So any such extension actually lands you in the tangent space of the manifold at that point as well. Both of these facts should surprise you, considering the fact that we had absolutely no way of figuring out what the differential of an arbitrary fun of a function of a differentiable function on an arbitrary domain in Euclidean space should be. I'll refer you to the notes for how to prove these theorems, but it's actually once we've already taken care of a lot of the theorems in multivariable calculus, many of these results for manifolds transfer essentially by either choosing coordinate charts and then using the theorems we know there, or perhaps using open sets around our spaces and then making uh, functions and using our usual theorems in that case. And very often what you can do is you can use a diagram chase to figure out how to prove something.